by the restless sea, we are met to call from out the past stories strange and weird. Bell keeper, pull the bell so all may know we are gathered again in the weird circle. again their immortal kill, a passion in the desert. Have you ever noticed how very much a woman is like a beast? The resemblance, no doubt, is due to the fact that they have so very much in common. Any man of us frequently has seen a woman turn into a beast or a good facsimile thereof at any provocation. But there is only one man of my experience who saw a beast turn into a woman. He was a Frenchman by the name of Gaston Monet. It all started in Upper Egypt. A column of soldiers with the French Foreign Legion was on the march to join their eastern flank. After three months of marching and fighting, guerrilla fashion, this particular group came to a small Arab village named Dela Heber. Strangely enough, in that isolated, dirty village, there was one white woman. You've no idea what a white woman looks like to a soldier who's been on the march for months. And this one, well, she was no ordinary woman. She was lithe and subtle, like a desert panther. Her skin was tanned by the sun, and her hair, it was heavy and brown with gold lights. And her eyes, they were the most amazing part of her. They were large yellow orbs, remote and fathomless. She stood in the narrow streets watching the column of soldiers march by, and then she glided out from the group of gaping natives and brushed one soldier's shoulder with her hand, Gaston's shoulder. He turned and... What do you want? I must talk to you. I can be caught, Marshal, for talking to you. Tell the important, please. Not now. I, I'll meet you later. Please, please go back. Later? When? Midnight tonight? If you fail me, I will die. Don't fail me. Midnight, then. But where? At the end of the palms. Where you entered the city. Oh, goodbye. Go quickly before you're seen. Goodbye. Come in. Halt! We'll make camp at the outer gate of the city. Do you understand? Come in. Halt! Wasn't she a beauty? What are you talking about, Gaston? I did not see anybody. The white girl, the one who talked to me. Gaston, have you lost your mind completely? Nobody talked to you. You are seeing things. But the, the woman who whispered to me. Woman? <laughs> Just a group of natives and a tame panther. <laughs> You've quite an eye for women, Michelle. But you missed this one. And I'm to see her again. Tonight at midnight. And so it was that night when the moon was yellow in the sky. Gaston sneaked away from camp and walked down the street, walked to the end of the mud-banked road. He saw the girl standing under the palms and his pulse quickened. But blended with that quickening was something more, something of fear, something in her eyes, in those cold, placid yellow eyes, something that seemed to swim under the lips. You've come at last. I was worried, my friend. What is your name? Gaston Monet. And yours? Mignon Alwa. Why do you look at me that way? Oh, you're the first decent thing I've seen in months. <laughs> Am I? Tell me, why did you ask me, out of all of the others, to, to meet you here tonight? I mean, it is strange, isn't it? Perhaps it is fate. And besides, I am in trouble. I'm stranded here. I set out on an expedition with some friends. Friends? Yes, friends from France. We were attacked and they were killed. The natives won't leave the village. You know that. And I can't stand it here any longer. But, but how can I help you? You are brave and strong. You could take me to a coastal city and then I could sail for France. For civilization. But, but I can't desert my outfit and just leave uh, suddenly into the desert. Besides, we, we have no provisions. I have provisions. I've saved them for a long time waiting for just such a one as you. 
And the journey is simple. Due east, four days' march. I I should like to help you very much in any, any way I can, but... Oh, confound it, that's desertion. I, I just can't, woman. If you leave me here now, I will die. I will die in this place. Gaston, please. Gaston, don't refuse me. Please don't. It was warm out that evening. Warm. And the desert moon plays tricks with a man's mind. And the girl Mignon was more important to Gaston then than his country, his army, or his friends. And so they left together in the dead of the night. They stole out of De La Heba into the desert, into the lonely desert, with just enough provisions to make their way to the coast. And so the night passed and turned into morning, and that day passed and turned into another, and back in the village of De La Heba, Lieutenant Michel reported Monet's absence to Major Duval. The alarm was given, and the barracks were searched. And the search was fruitless. Lieutenant Michel reporting, sir. Yes, Lieutenant. The entire city's been searched, sir, but not a sign of him. I'm afraid, sir, it is desertion. I thought so. Because someone there never was army material. Weak. He'll never get away. We should let him die in that desert. Please, sir. Not out there. These sandstorms, they have started, sir. Oh, forget him. Blast these young men who join the foreign service and expect it to be a picnic. What do they think war is? I quite agree, sir. They desert and then they expect me to send out a searching party to look for them. Well, they're right, I'll have to. You, Michel, choose four men, get your provisions from headquarters and start toward the coast. Try to head him off. You can reach the coast before he does. Where will we rejoin you, sir? Orders will be waiting for you on the coast. That's all, Lieutenant Michel. Thank you, sir. And so the search party started under the leadership of Lieutenant Michel. But Gaston Monet and Mignon were miles ahead of them. Camping for the night under the yellow moon, completely unaware that they were being followed, Gaston looked at the girl and breathed in the magic air of the desert. I dreamt of people like you, Mignon. And in my arms they came from nowhere. Just as you came from nowhere. Are you trying to pry into my secrets again? <laughs> no. No, I... I was just looking at you. You are so incredibly lovely. Oh, I'm glad. Mignon, we're about three days' march from the sea. We're only two days away from another native village. I could get work there, and and we could get married. Married? Nonsense. And, and settle down. We'd be there five years or so, and then we'd return to France. The army would have forgotten about me by then, and I'd get a good job. I'd make you proud of me. Being buried out here for another five years, honestly, Gaston. But you wouldn't be buried. You'd be with me, just the two of us together. I'm... I'm frightfully in love with you. If you loved me, you wouldn't treat me the way you do. If I loved you, I probably wouldn't. But... but you... you chose me out of all the others. Yes, I chose you. And now, if you don't mind, let's get some sleep. We're going to be on the march tomorrow morning early. Sleep... And march. Sleep and march. Three more days and then... Then give myself up to the authorities. You'll probably spend a few days in the guardhouse. Nothing more for this little adventure. Stop dramatizing yourself. The army calls it desertion, Mignon. There's only one punishment for desertion. What is that? You know very well what it is. Death. You got away once, you'll get away again. Don't you care what happens to me? Yes, of course I care. But what can I do? <laughs> What is that? Oh, a desert lion. Don't worry. He won't come near us, not while the fire is going. Fortunately, a beast is afraid of fire. But a woman loves it. Oh. Good night, Gaston. Good night, Mignon. Well, such a hurt way to say good night. <laughs> And so they slept by the fire, and the fire played tricks with the shadows on the sand as they slept. But crouched not far from them was the panther, eyeing the boy and the girl, and it crept toward the fire unafraid, sidling up to the boy until its large yellow head was a foot from Gaston's arm. And it too fell asleep, and the fire died down. The morning sun rose over the sands, and they awoke, all three at once. Gaston, look, next to you. Where's my rifle? I, I've got it. <gasps> oh. Don't make any fast move, whatever you do, Mignon. 
Any sudden action will frighten the animal and she'll spring on us. We just can't sit here and wait. Move your left arm very slowly toward the rifle. Very slowly. And try to hand it to me. All right. I wonder why she stands there looking at me like that. I wonder. She's coming closer. Sidling up to you like a great tabby. Here, I got the gun. I'll push it toward you. We can't shoot at this close range. She would never give me time to take aim. Look at her. Sitting right next to you. Yes. Why, she she licked my arm. I believe she wants to make friends. What are you going to do? Pat her. I believe she'd allow me to. There. There you are. Watch out. You're a beautiful creature, aren't you? Beautiful lady. She's purring. Just like a great house cat. Yes. Yes, she likes it. I believe we've got a pet, Mignon. A pet, indeed. She'll purr at you now and turn on you at the first opportunity. Yes. Women and beasts are very much alike. They make friends of you and then they turn on you, don't they? You are not being funny, Gaston. I suppose you know that. Look. She's allowing me to play with her ears. What are we going to do with her? Nothing. Not now, at any rate. Just be careful not to frighten her. As soon as she goes any distance from us, I'll be able to take some kind of aim and shoot her. Yes, I suppose you're right. Look at her, Mignon. Do you notice anything? Nothing except she's a lovely specimen. Lovely, yes. Lovely. And she looks like you. But like me? That's sheer nonsense. Why? It's that... true. Look at her eyes. Yellow like yours. Deep like yours, cruel and cold, predatory like oh, yours. Just all I tell you, it's nonsense. Come over here, Mignon. Try to make a friend of her. What do you mean? I want you to pet her. Just as I'm doing. Well, of course, if she will let me. Try it. All right. I will. <laughs> oh, she, she snapped at me. Try it again. No, I... I'm afraid, Gaston. It's nice to see you afraid of something. I said try it again. No, 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 I, I, I won't. I said try it again. Did you hear me? <laughs> my arm. She bit my arm. It's bleeding. <laughs> she doesn't like you, Mignon. I wonder why. Watch. She'll allow me to stroke her. Please, Gaston, don't. Are you frightened, my dear? Why, this animal won't hurt you? Beautiful creature, aren't you? You don't like Mignon, do you? Or perhaps you do like her to test the sharpness of your claws. Don't, 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 don't joke about it, Gaston. You don't know what you're doing. You have no idea. You have no idea. Am I frightening you? Frightening me? <laughs> I have only one chance to be a woman, a real woman. A chance to go to a civilized country. A chance to break away from them. From the Panthers. From my brothers and sisters. Kill that animal or I must return to them. I lied to you before, Gaston. I lied to you when I said I came to Delahaber with an expedition. I was born here just as she was born here. And there is a kinship between us. Yes, that kinship you will never understand. Please, just don't kill that me! Blazing sun, Mignon begged Gaston to kill the panther. But Gaston insisted that all three travel toward the coast together. Why, he never knew. It was as if some power stronger than himself forced him on. The beautifully sleek creature followed behind Gaston and the girl, at times coming up to rub her fine, sleek body against his leg and growl, baring her fangs at the girl. When night began to creep over the sands like some monstrous dark hand, they stopped not far from an oasis. We'll make camp here, Mignon. Yes, here. Here in the desert. I'm so tired, Gaston. Are you? Poor little girl. 
How about you, beautiful lady? You'd better spread out the blankets and the food. I'll get some water. Oh, don't leave me alone with her, please, Gaston. She won't hurt you if you leave her alone. Oh, you don't know what you're saying. I'll be back directly. The water's only some half mile away. Call for help Gaston. if you need any. Gaston, please, please, Gaston. What are you afraid of? I said I'd be right back and the animal might follow me. But she's not following you. She's staying still, here. still, she won't hurt you. You've got the gun just in case. Gaston, please. Don't tease me. You don't know what you're doing. <laughs> I like to see you frightened, Mignon. You who are so sure of yourself. I'll be back directly. Nice little lady. Lie still. Let me point the gun. This won't hurt you. Why do you look at me like that? Yes, Gaston is right. We are alike. Our eyes. Our souls. And our emotions. No, little lady. Stay where you are until I get an aim. A perfect aim. No, no, no! Gaston! 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 Oh. Mignon! Mignon, I'm coming! Mignon! Mignon! Back, lady! Back! Leave her alone, lady! I said leave Mignon alone! That's a good girl. There, beautiful lady. Mignon! Don't let me die. You were a fool, Mignon, a fool. She wouldn't have hurt you if you hadn't tried to shoot her. I was frightened of her. I was so frightened. Yes, yes, She's so like me, and she, she knows it. She not only wanted to kill me, she wanted more. She wanted to absorb a human soul in that animal body. My soul. Try to lie still. Quietly, my dear, quietly. Look at her. Waiting for me. Watching and waiting. Waiting for me to die. Yes. <laughs> Quiet, my dear, quiet. Lie still if you can. Lie still. It was such a short time to be given a human life. That's why I was so anxious to get away from the desert. You don't believe me. Gaston, you will. You will. Mignon. Mignon. Little lady, you, you killed her, and I'll kill you. Yes, kill you for taking the only thing I loved. Yes, I'll kill you. <laughs> Mignon. Mignon, where are you? But you're dead. You're dead, aren't you? But I heard you laugh. Or was it the panther? Mignon. Your laugh came from the throat of a panther. Can it be the blending of two souls? The soul of a woman and a beast? If, if I kill the panther, then I kill you. For you live in her, little lady. And you are Mignon. Mignon. Come over here. Come over here, my darling. Yes, Mignon. Now I never have to return to the coast. I'll return to the little native village and you'll be my pet. You'll never leave me now, will you? Will you, Mignon? My beautiful creature. You're wounded, aren't you? A bullet through your shoulder. Will you let me fix it? There. Lie still, Mignon. It won't hurt you much. It's just a flesh wound in your shoulder. There. Take out my pocket knife. And a little water. No, no, beautiful lady, it won't hurt. It won't hurt at all. Just another minute and... There you are. It's a nice, clean wound. How does that feel, beautiful lady? How does that feel? And now, this shell of a woman which was once the soul of Mignon must be buried. A decent burial. Here in the burning sand. And so it was. The panther lay lazily in the sun while Gaston dug a sandy grave for the body that had been Mignon and placed her in it. The sun slowly set in the orange desert and the panther waited sleepily for him. 
And not many miles back, the search party plodded on in the cool winds over the great rises of sand mountains. Lieutenant Michel and Trooper Jacques walked ahead. Come along, men. I know you are tired, but we will soon catch up with him. How do you know, Lieutenant Michel? He might be gone ten different directions. If we miss him out here, we will catch him on the coast. Jacques, there is only one route to the coast. And that is due east. And that is the way he will go. Uh, don't you think he knows we're searching for him, sir? He left in too much of a hurry. He probably did not think about anything. Yeah. I always thought Gaston liked the army. Yuck, you can never tell what a man is thinking. I always say, cherchez la femme, Lieutenant. You cannot very well cherchez la femme when there is not a woman within 30 to 40 miles of De La Heba. You don't know Gaston Monet, sir. Stop talking nonsense. You sound like you know more than you're saying, Lieutenant. Maybe I do, and maybe I don't. Tell me, Jacques, you made a complete search of De La Heba. Was there any record of a white woman living there? No, sir. Nobody ever seen a white woman in Della Haver. Well, was anybody else reported missing from the village? No, nobody. Just a pet panther that one of the natives owned. A pet panther? I wonder. I really wonder. And well, he could wonder. For miles ahead of him, tracking off to another native village... Gaston Monet and the sleek panther trekked through the sand, retracing their steps to a halfway mark, heading away from the coast, away from a world of civilization. And the fourth day of the journey was almost at an end, and provisions were scarce. Mignon! Mignon! We must make camp again. The sun is setting, and night comes fast over the desert. We've only a little fruit left. You're hungry, aren't you? Well, beautiful lady, here you are. How is that? It's all so strange. You and Mignon. Mignon, what were you really? Where did you come from? What happened to that peculiar, distorted mind of yours? So much the beast. So very much a woman. <laughs> are you laughing at me now? Yes, yes, I don't blame you. It is funny loving you so much. Loving you and your being so very far away and yet so close. Are you content now, darling? Content to stay with me forever? Please, please be content. Try hard to find happiness. You would never have been happy in France or in any other part of the world. And I'll take care of you the rest of your days. What is that? Another panther? Is that one of your kinsmen? Mignon. Mignon, you can't leave me, little lady. Please. Please, I'd take care of you. Don't leave me. Please don't leave me. I'll kill you if you leave me. You can't leave me. No, no. Come here. I'll hold you here. And you'll never get away. You won't leave me. Mignon. Mignon, don't pull away like that. Oh! Your teeth are sharp. Don't. Don't. Where? Where's my knife? Where is it? Oh, here it is. No. No, I told you I'd kill you if you tried. And I will. I will. There. The knife. There. And there. And there. <laughs> Darling. Darling Mignon. This is your release. Yes, your release. Please come back to me. Please come back to me. Don't leave me alone in the desert. Oh, Mignon. Mignon. You'll never go back to your panther friend. Never, darling. Never. Never. And the blood flowed freely from the wounded beast's heart, staining the yellow sands crimson. And Gaston turned toward the fading sun, his face streaked by tears, stained by sand. And walking away from the beast, he looked toward the sky. Then, falling face forward on the sand... He lay under the hot desert sun. Toward evening, as the sun set in the sky, the four-man searching party reached the blood-stained sand, and then... Lieutenant Michel, look. Eh? The panther, dead. Sacre bleu. A body covered with knife wounds. Look behind him. Gaston. Gaston! No, oh, it's no use, sir. Gaston Monet's been dead for well over 12 hours. Dead? The panther's body covered with knife wounds. 
and Gaston's body absolutely unharmed. Funny, ain't it? Not too funny. I wonder if that's the pet panther that disappeared. Probably. Jacques, never mention that in the report to Major Duval. Just right, desertion, due to insanity. Insanity, sir? Yes, Jacques, insanity. Caused by desert madness. From the time-worn pages of the past, we have brought again the immortal tale of a passion in the desert. Bellkeeper, hold the bells. 